What's going on everyone? My name is Impulse and welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 7. Look at this behind me guys. I have been chipping away at the base. I got the walls in and it is looking good. I didn't put this little crossbeam pattern on these ones on purpose here because I wanted to take a look and see if maybe we actually like it better without that. So let's take a look here. There's the view kind of on the, the new without diagonal look and I did all the sides here. So we've got all of them done. The wall is up and all that is in. Now let's go take a look again at how the front looks with that uh, darker, you know, the gray concrete pattern there coming down the side right there. There's a look at that. I I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I got a lot of comments saying it kind of looked like an oil rig, and I think it's because of that style of bracing right there. And maybe that's not what we're going for here. We want more of a modern look, and this might accomplish that a little better. I don't know. Uh, so here it is. I ask you guys to let me know what you think as we take more looks at this. Do you like the back here, what that side looks like, better than what we started with in the front? And if the majority of you agree, maybe we'll do that. In fact, I think what I'll do is I will put a poll on the screen. I believe we can still do that. Uh, there should be a poll there. I'm just going to ask your opinion. Please uh, feel free to participate in that poll, and I will use the numbers from the poll to get a good idea of what you guys like better. Uh, so it'll just be the front design or the back design. And the front design, obviously, is this one, and that is with the bracing there. All right, so <laughs> I'm hoping to, uh, to get resolution on that. I can't wait to see what you guys think. So the plan for today is to get a little more work done on the inside of the base. You can see there's a lot of things still disconnected. There's actually uh, no great way for me to get from the bottom floor to the top. I did put in this little elevator just kind of seeing if I wanted to maybe put one in in the corners. I think I've changed my mind on how that's going to get laid out. Uh, we got a lot of just open redstone. Might work on that a bit, trying to just get some ideas for how the inside will basically flow here, you know, layout wise. And also there's some odds and ends. I need to get to as well some of my previous farms not fully functioning at least not as good as they could be and we need to get some fix-ups happening so I'm gonna get to that but uh, I did notice there is something over here you can get a good idea of how big this space is as I hop along here trying to get from one space to another we've got uh, something left here for us monsters brew new shop opening soon please read all right let's take a look and see what this is gorgeous hermit yep this was definitely Left for me. <laughs> I will be opening a brand new shop very soon over at the shopping district, and I need your help. Monsters Brew is the name of the shop, and I call on you to help me decide what potions should be sold. Please, can you write in this book the top three potions that you would buy, and then sign the book with your name so I know who is from? Sorry, it's not anonymous. <laughs> After signing, please return this book to the chest at the Great Willow Tree over at the shopping district. Then, once the book has been returned, you can press the button over by the cauldron for a chance to win diamonds. Yay, woo! <laughs> Thank you for participating in my market research. Okay, excellent. Oh, there's more. Good luck. May magic be on your side. Much love. Stress. Okay, all right, stress is opening a potion shop. That is awesome. Okay, top three potions. Hmm, I'm gonna need to think on this one a bit. Okay, I thought about it. Here's what I've decided. Fire resist, number one, because anytime we're in the nether, I always make sure I have that on my hot bar because, you know, if we end up in lava, I don't want to lose my stuff. So I always have one of those, we call them noob juices, on the bar ready to go. So having a supply readily available, those would be nice. Invisibility is always nice when we're working with mobs, you know, kind of like we did with the Guardian Farm when we tackled the Ocean Monument, used invisibility to make sure they weren't attacking us the whole time. So that would be nice to have those easily uh, available to us as well. And weakness, these are obviously used to convert zombie villagers and get those lower trades. So if we do anything with some more villagers in the future to have weakness potions would be very nice so these are my top three now i just need to sign the book um impulses choice i guess okay <laughs> now let's go find this willow tree she's talking about at the shopping district this has got to be it this definitely doesn't look like any of the other Oh, there are no trees here. It's all mushrooms. <laughs> I guess there's one right there. But yeah, this definitely looks like a willow tree here. And oh, okay. So it's, it's, uh, 
Yeah, is it with her? Okay, gotta watch where you're walking around here. Apparently, it said something about a cauldron. Okay, please put return books in here. Okay. Oh, it looks like I am not the only one here. We got Cub Fan already submitted. Iskull submitted. Green Tango and Jevin have already submitted. I'm not gonna peek at these. We'll find out uh, in the end, I suppose. Once once uh, stress gets them all kind of tallied up and figures out what she's gonna sell. Now press for reward. Okay. I thought, I figured this would just be entered into some sort of drawing and we would later find out. So, okay, nothing in there yet. Let's see what happens here. Come on. Is the two beeps good? Okay. Okay. We got two diamonds out of it. I think I think each beep resulted in a diamond. There was two beeps. Okay, that was cool. That was easy money right there. Just had to give our advice on some potions and we got diamonds out of it. That is awesome. Thanks, Stress. As I was passing through here, I noticed the head games has definitely changed. And yeah, no longer do we have all the pillars with all the heads. That is because the results are in. The winner has been announced. The diamonds have been taken down and distributed amongst the winners. And Unfortunately, unfortunately, we didn't win. <laughs> My plan to turn in, you know, thousand plus pillager heads wasn't enough to get the win here. In fact, I don't even think we came in the top three after all was said and done. I believe Green and Scar actually pulled out the win, which is amazing. So let's see. For that, they got the diamonds, of course, and also it looks like they got Voucher for a large armor stand scene, which Cleo is amazing at doing armor stand scenes. But my name's on here as well, and it looks like I also got a small armor stand scene voucher. So at any point in time, we could request, you know, just Cleo to come by and set up a little armor stand decoration wherever we want. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to hold on to that. But I did notice there's something else here. It looks to me the Hermiton Herald Volume 1. What is this? Something new must be coming soon to this place. She's going to repurpose this, it seems, uh, which is awesome. Yeah, it looks like it says here, Hermiton Herald coming soon. Advertising prices. Oh, okay. So if we want a spot, this is like a newspaper thing. She's done this in the past. It's really cool. If we want like to advertise a new shop or something for sale or whatever, uh, we can put an ad in the paper, basically, this Hermiton Herald, and she'll distribute that to the other hermits. And I think we pay a subscription fee to have these delivered to us, uh, which is really really cool. Also, look at this final head game tally. She's got like this crazy ledger basically where it kept track. She kept track of how many heads were turned in per team per day, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, you can kind of get an idea if I won't flip through all 34 pages, but let's just take a look and see how how false and I did. So she did know I was involved with this, of course. Uh, real slow start. I didn't do much. And then bam, there's the, when we turned in the uh, all the heads there. We got 1,700 in one go. It got us up to two thousand points but uh, unfortunately yeah it definitely wasn't enough when we're talking about green and scar with their master plan look at how much they added <laughs> towards the end here just skyrocketed to 7724 insane insane we didn't stand a chance but that's all right it was a lot of fun i'm glad we participated in it and i will gladly accept my small armor stand scene voucher okay the first thing i want to fix today is we are here where the guardians come raining out into the nether through a portal up there and they fall down to their death here and then we shove their drops through the portal now i'm here just making some adjustments to this because i what i was finding when I was AFK at the Guardian Farm is there was still some drops just kind of hanging out in here and we were doing some fancy stuff trying to get it into just a one slice deal and then into the portal and then it occurred to me if we just go ahead and allow it to use both spaces of the portal to shove the drops into I think we're going to be a lot better off and so I made a change here you can see what's happening basically is the Guardians would fall they'd hit these magma blocks if they don't die on the fall at least the magma blocks will start to like burn them and they will hopefully die eventually and then we kind of like switch this out so that we can push the drops through the portal and at the same time if any guardians 
continue to fall, they will fall onto these blocks and still die, and we can take care of them that way. And then all the drops basically would fall down into this space here. So I'll just throw some glass in there to demonstrate, and we open up the gate right now and shove them through the portal. There we go, and they go flying through. Now, that should work pretty good, I think. I'm going to go ahead and... Oops. <laughs> Oh, uh, that wasn't good. I'm going to go ahead and close this up with glass so we make sure that uh, all the drops go exactly where they're supposed to go. And that should, actually, we can go right there. That should hopefully fix some of our problems that we've been seeing with this. So I'm going to test it out. Now, on the other side of the portal, we were seeing another issue. Yeah, it is a mess in here <laughs> for sure. But that's all right, because all this is going to get reset when we update to 116. And I have to tear all this out and kind of rebuild it back up I suppose after we do that but that's okay uh, but on the other side what we were seeing is drops ending up sitting on like the bottom frame of the portal and I think that's because they just weren't getting the right momentum coming through the portal here so I'm gonna take a look and see if that's still an issue or not let's take a look from our camera account and see if this is actually working as we would expect now you can see all the guardians dying right here raining in this is still just so fun to watch look at this it's insane oh they're rated in like crazy all the drops are sitting right now on the magma blocks those drop down below and they sit there and then after the timer goes off they should push directly through the portal and it does look like they are going through at a very fast rate so hopefully that solves the problem on the other side as well but we'll go on the other side and take a look yep we can see this is still a problem here you can see the item sitting right there on the portal portal frame and it just comes spitting in uh, most of them or at least some of them will shoot out into the water stream and go up into our sorting system but you can see there's quite a bit that just come in and sit right on the portal frame and that is not good yeah there goes some so we know that some is still going through but we definitely need to do something about these items right here because they could just keep collecting and <laughs> to the point that they could potentially crash the server so let's see if we can get some kind of redstone solution to take care of this problem for us all right, I think I've finally got a solution here. I tried all sorts of different things, moving portals around, starting to block certain areas off, all sorts of stuff, but it all came down to basically just trying to collect those items that actually sit right there. As you can see, they get sucked up immediately now, and we had to figure out how to distribute them fast enough so that we could get them up to the sorting system before they start collecting here. And this is what I've done. You can see there's a lot of observers going off. They're firing rather quickly here. And what's happening is this hopper minecart right here is pulling the items in. As soon as they come through, you can see it getting populated. And then immediately those items are getting distributed over these four hoppers. And I just had to kind of align this minecart so it would straddle kind of the cross section of these four minecarts. I got a fence back there and I got this sitting on top of trapdoors because if without a rail, if it's sitting directly on top of the hopper, it doesn't suck the items through. There's just too much gap right there. So we put the trapdoor there to kind of keep them up. This one's to keep it from going all the way over here. So it kind of aligns it to get these two. And then that wall back there is to get those two. And you can see all of these are going off at once. All the items coming through up this water elevator here. I guess I could have used soul sand, but they, they make their way up slowly <laughs> and they make it. And you can see these are going off as well. So they're all getting activated and that seems to do the trick i tried it with just one i had tried it with two and eventually had to go to four of them because the drops are just coming in that fast but you can see no longer are they sitting there forever eventually they get sucked up and we don't get yeah there we go as long as there's no items just continuing to hover there you know for eternity we are good to go and this is taking care of business so i am very happy with this and now it is a lot safer to afk up above and collect all these drops and here we are up above at the sorting system and you can see things are coming in here oh my goodness it is now filling up super fast now that we are collecting everything look at that you can just watch these roll in oh my goodness coming in super fast uh there's a cat here <laughs> I don't know where this came from. This is not mine. I I don't know if somebody was using this farm and decided to bring a cat in case phantoms came. I didn't know this, but apparently if phantoms try to attack you while a cat is around, it will just scare them off and you don't have to worry about it. Now, I've been 
AFK in here basically is how I've been doing it. I just block myself in AFK and then when I'm all done, I come out here, do all the crafting and we're good to go. But apparently somebody felt the need to bring a cat. That's pretty funny. I should put in more chests here now that this is coming in so fast because this is going to fill up in no time for sure. So this is awesome. You see all the items coming in here. <laughs> So good, so good. I am so glad this is uh, finally AFKable, you know, without having to worry about breaking the server or anything. Next stop is here at the Wither Rose Farm, and the reason I am here is because it's got some issues every once in a while, where if a hermit comes into the nether and, or the end, I should say we're in the end, yes, hello. Uh, if they come into the end and they're maybe using the Enderman farm or doing something, you know, raiding a city or something like that, the rates here at my farm slow down just enough that this wither will get bored because there's no enderman to shoot at and it will just shoot its blue skulls out randomly breaking all my things and it's been a major problem so i need to do something to ensure that he's not going to get bored and so i have been trying to figure out a way to get him to maybe focus on something else for the time being and this was my first attempt at fixing the problem we've got an iron golem stationed directly in front of him and basically uh oh i shouldn't have come in here <laughs> That's all right. I made him. He, he He's fine with me. Uh, basically, the wither can see directly through this hole. So he can see the wither boss. The wither boss can see him. And it's just a tiny little gap hole and hopefully won't take any damage there. So I'm going to test this thing now and we're going to see if we can get this to work. I've done lots of different testing, different configurations in creative. We're going to test it here on the server and... Yeah, we got some Enderman falling down. Okay, excellent. Now remember, if we flip this lever, he can now shoot because we're not blocking any part of his body with any blocks. So now he's shooting at those Endermen. And now the question is, what happens when he runs out of Endermen to shoot at? Will he continue to shoot at the Iron Golem back there in the back? I think you can already see that's what he's doing now. In fact, can we even see what he's thinking by doing F3 and B? You can see that blue line right there is going straight ahead. In fact, it doesn't even look like he's attempting to shoot at these Endermen. Men. He's just trying to shoot through the hole down back at the golem. So now it's a matter of running this for a while and seeing if there's our wither roses being produced. Excellent. And seeing if he ever does actually hit the iron golem. So I'm just going to keep my eye on this for a while and we're going to hope this works. Well, I've been here for a while and he hasn't gotten hit once. This seems to be working fantastic. If he did get hit, you would see little cracks on him and stuff or he could potentially die of course and if he died then everything would fall apart here so I decided that's great I think we can trust this but just to be doubly sure I want to put another system in place a bit of protection here just in case something happens to our golem and that is what I've done up here I've turned on or I've got an on switch basically that allows us to detect endermen falling through the, the channel here as they do they're going to trip the tripwire hooks and that is going to start this comparator burnout clock to give you know, a few seconds of the wither being able to actually fire. So as this clock gets turned on because an enderman falls through the channel, it's going to retract that piston there, which is holding that cobblestone fence. And then at that point, our wither boss can start to fire at the enderman inside the, the tube there. And as you can see right now, there's no enderman in there. But if we fly up above here, I think we can get this activated if we just go on our platform for just a second in here to get all the spawns off of the island and surrounding zone now you can see enderman falling into there and if we get down there fast enough we might be able to see that our clock is now on and you can see yeah the signals coming through here if you take a look it's slowly burning out power is 13 12 11 10 sorry, on the right side and it's starting to go so this gives him some time to actually shoot at all those endermen that just fell through the tube and he takes care of business and around that time it will turn back off and now he is got the block back in him and can't fire at anything and you can see we're down to one enderman anyway so that's about perfect i think all right i'm feeling much better about this now and our capability of being able to afk no matter what happens here in the end if other hermits come through we're not getting spawns for a while it should hold up between those two safety guards
Back at the base now, and the second floor is completely in. This is pretty nice. We can walk around. All of these have been capped off and filled in. Looking really good here. Got a nice big view of our board here, which we still need to do something more with. I've been thinking about this, and I may redo exactly how this is done. I realized that if we just move things from left to right, there's always going to be a big area of emptiness, either you know in the middle or on the right or left, depending on where we're at in the season and with all these tasks to do. So definitely been rethinking that. I may change it up a bit. We're not going to do that now. What I want to do now actually is get the way in here. So do we have, was that the minecart? Okay. I thought that was, no, it is. It's a mob. Oh no. I need to light that up a little better. You can see it's super dark in there now that we've got this on. Uh, but I've had this water elevator here in the corner. Initially I thought, Maybe I would just have one in all four corners, but I think I've changed my mind now. I think I just want to have one right in the center, and that's a creeper. We're going to come over here now. <laughs> we have a creeper. Okay. All right. Got some lighting to do for sure. Actually, it does look pretty cool in here, seeing all the, uh, the lights on top there. But yeah, this guy needs to get off of my storage system for sure. And then there was a skelly over here too. Let's go take care of him. Oh, there he is. He's on the sorting system as well. Oh, look at that fancy bow that he's got. I hope he doesn't drop any items into the filters and mess things up. <laughs> I still have to set a lot of these filters on my sorting system. A lot of things still to do here in this base for sure, but that's nice. That's what I like about it. There's always something to do. And if we run out of ideas, we have that big board up top to let us know what we can do. But I'm going to actually put this water elevator in the center of the room, I think. And I want to start splashing some color in here because everything right now is just these grays. So I think I might actually start to add a little bit of yellow. Initially, remember, I wanted to add yellow to the outside, but I think it might actually look good inside instead. And so, yeah, I think I'll build it out of yellow stained glass panes, maybe? I think that'd be a good idea. And I like this, where you can just kind of walk right in through the, through the bars there. So, yeah, let's build one of these up right here in the middle, and we'll see how this looks. We now have a water elevator right here in the center of the storage room, and I decided to figure out how to get down from here without hurting ourselves. I did waterlogged slabs here, so we can walk in now to go up, and we can do our thing up here, and we're ready to come down. You just go in the corner here, and you fall right on the waterlogged slab. You can walk right out, no damage done. That is absolutely perfect. But now I'm starting to get a little worried because of all the mobs that we've seen spawning up on top of the storage system. I I think what I want to do now is start to cover up some of this redstone, at least figure out a wall pattern and make sure that it's properly lit before a creeper blows up any of these circuits because that would make me pretty sad if that was to happen. Things are starting to come together. This looks so much better now that we've covered up the redstone. Started to add in some color finally. Got the yellow concrete introduced here and I do think that looks really good against that cyan terracotta. But uh, these walls look a little flat, a little dark, a little plain. I'm going to need some help on this and think about this a little bit. So again, if you guys have any ideas what we could do to brighten this up or give it a little more character, that would be good. I do want to keep things clean and modern looking for sure. Kind of like a futuristic slash modern design in here. But yeah, this is looking great. We got the ceiling on. I'll probably do a little bit more with this. Maybe some chandeliers or something. I have no idea. But uh, yeah, this is definitely, definitely coming together and again I've just done the front face of this because <laughs> this is going to take a lot of that cyan terracotta and digging up the mesas, no big deal, but the cyan dye is actually kind of a big deal. Even with the flower farm that Tango built that I've been uh, pinching the, the corn flowers from, it's it's running low. So I don't know. I started using my own lapis to get the blue dye and yeah, I don't want to do that apparent. You know, obviously it's, it's not good. So anyway, uh, it is looking good though. It's a lot of cyan, but but it's looking great. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Of course, I'm happy to hear your feedback. We've done quite a bit this episode. It may not have seemed like it, but we did. Uh, building up those base walls out in the ocean here uh, did take a lot of time, and I did that before the video ever even started, just to come in and show you guys. Again, feedback on these columns. Welcome here. I'd love to know whether you like those ones or you like the new ones without the cross bracing here in the back. So 
let me know again. I uh, would appreciate your feedback as usual. And I think between all the base building we've done and solving some major problems that were preventing us from being able to properly AFK, I think I'm going to call it a day. <laughs> oh, it was fun, though. It was fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do that before you go. And with that said, I'll see you again next time. Have a good one, everyone.